Hello everyone, my name is Asa. Thank you for joining me today on looking at the restoration of this old Fusey pocket watch from Liverpool. Uh, let's get into it. Or, I found this watch at an antique mall in Northern Washington. It was in this little tin with this uh, foam, as you can see. But it was in pretty good shape. And look at the Liverpool windows. This watch was beautiful. This is a gorgeous watch. And what's really nice is you can see the balance is almost swinging freely. I wonder if I check it, but it is swinging nicely before any, any work is done to it. See the chain is wrapped on the mainspring barrel and that's a good sign that it's not on the fusee because that means that you have wound it onto the fusee and the watch is completely run down and the chain has transferred from the fusee back onto the mainspring barrel. And here we're looking at the dust cover again. Check and see if everything's there and working properly. It fits and snaps and slides. It's a little shaky, a little worn. That post that sticks up has a little notch that that lever swings into. Let's begin disassembling this thing. With these old fusees, they're a full plate and they got the balance cock just resting on there with a screw. Now, as you can see, the hairspring stud is actually separate from the balance cock, which is really interesting. Some old Howards, E. Howards did that as well. Move the balance. Now we're looking at this mainspring barrel bridge. Move those two screws. You can see that flex, meaning that there isn't a taper pin in that post, most likely. That main top plate, main bridge rather, isn't held down. Yeah, you see the taper pin barely squeaks out on the either side of that, that post, barely holding down the bridge. Remember that taper pin? <laughs> that one went flying. Get this guy out of there. This really was a, a system that wasn't the best, but it's what they did back then. It's what they had. Those holes get so worn. Move this main bridge. Oh my goodness, yeah, the pallet flip stuck too. It's in the escape wheel. Those jewels are something else. Get the escape wheel out of there. Fourth wheel. Pretty watch. I had forgot to take off the dial and hands, and so I'm doing this. Not at the best time, to say the least. I think this is the third fusee I've worked on, so I'm definitely learning the technique on how to disassemble this watch and reassemble it properly. Because, yeah, re release that fusey chain from the mainspring barrel. Let's get this spring out of here. Mainspring barrel arbor. Now, as you can see, when I unwind this, this mainspring is quite set and it should be replaced. And I did not do that in this video and you'll see why. These barrels had a different way of hooking the mainspring onto the barrel. See that hole in the mainspring barrel? This, that little notched end on the mainspring 
hooks into that hole on the barrel. That is not common. And so I just said, I'll put the, put the same mainspring back in. I don't have a replacement. So get the last of the tapered pins out, remove the dial. Everything's put together with tapered pins. Even the dial onto that, that dial plate is put together with tapered pins, everything. But the dial's in very, very good shape. I mean, this watch has been loved. Now to remove the cannon pinion from that center wheel. Just taking one of those staking stool, staking set tools and pressing that out. That is a lever that holds the mainspring tension on the dial side. And this is the spring. So actually this watch doesn't have a case, but this spring here holds, pushes to that lever. And basically that is what clicks the whole movement into the case. And almost all fusees are swing out of the case. So that's just a release. And there's that, yep, there's that lever that, that the spring connects to. This is the bottom side of the train bridge. Actually a removable bridge. <laughs> Look at all the grease, oh my goodness. Wow. Just removing the last components. That is the spring to the fusey click. Look at that. Yes, it needs to be cleaned in oil, that's for sure. That oil has seized. It is thick and useless now. So this is the fusee. If you see on the fusee, it's cone-shaped. And now this is, I, it's incredible that they had this technology back in the day. But right, this watch is probably from the 1850s, maybe 1840s or 30s, but almost 200 years ago, almost. That, is in a cone shape so that it has proper power displacement with the fusee chain. So mainspring barrel has, when it's fully run down, the mainspring barrel has the chain wound onto it. And when you wind the watch, you're winding the fusee, which pulls the chain onto the fusee. And it's cone shaped, and you wonder why. When the chain is with minimal wind, it's on the bigger part, the bottom part of the cone of the fusee. And so it has more area to pull. The chain has more surface area to pull, meaning more tension, when the watch is at low wind. And at the top, there's lesser surface area for the chain to pull, meaning less tension when the watch is at full wind. So this is a displacement of power, which is beautiful because with the modern day watches, we've got it down pretty good, but the same principle applies where the main spring, when it's fully wound, the watch runs better than when, when the spring is underwound or, or run down. And this fusee chain system is essentially a way to counteract that so you have proper power displacement throughout the whole length of the mainspring from full wind and down. But it's just a beautiful design. So now we're taking part of the fusee and how this, the, basically the ratchet system works in here. Everything is put together with taper pins. Just a simple, essentially click spring ratchet system for the fusee. Now to put all the parts away so we can go to the cleaner. I 
I normally do a dish of alcohol and clean everything off with that just to get the brunt of this caked up oil. But since this is a fusee and all these were basically made, they're almost all one-offs basically, I didn't even want to risk the fact of holding pieces and breaking them in this alcohol dish because there's no replacement. It's pretty much by size and good luck. So I just put everything in the baskets and cleaned it that way. But I do like to do the alcohol solution because that gets the brunt of the oil off and other grime. And a lot of times there's, there's stuck gunk and goo and whatnot that this ammoniated solution does not get. And so alcohol first, then the ammoniated solution. So the first one is a clean, which is the ammoniated solution. I believe that it's Zenith 100 or Zenith 101. One rinse, two rinse, three rinse, and dry. One cleaning, three bath, and a dry. And the bath also is a waterless uh, silicone solution. Oh, yes, that spring that holds the uh, lever for clicking into the case, where the movement swings out and clicks into the case that we don't have. I could not fit that in my basket, so I cleaned it with alcohol. I thought this one is probably hard to break, so I just cleaned it with alcohol. parts all dolled up. This is interesting too that the dial says railway special I believe and this would definitely not meet the US's railway um, certified watch. This is far from it. Just gonna give a little bit of oil to these springs inside the fusee. A little bit on that hole for the arbor. in and ratchets put the cover on here <laughs> cover holes kind of whooped Press that in. this movement holder looks like a piece of PVC pipe I, f I found it and then somebody had cut it so that you can adjust the size but there's also holes for oh this right here this is um, uh, D5 Mobius D5 it's kind of like a clock oil but I like to use it for arbors this works well and the mainspring not the mainspring I'm sorry the center wheel hole and the mainspring pushing as well there's that bottom bridge for the train the lever for the attachment to the case I wish I had the case so I could really find out which hallmark it has so I know exact year I will be doing some research into the movement and how old it is but I'm assuming it's either 30s 40s or 50s 1830 40 or 50 somewhere on there because it has a pallet fork one it's not a verge and it's a jeweled power fork at that as well and it has a normal balance rather than a solid uh, nickel or sorry solid brass or steel balance it actually has regulator screws on it
So basically, mainspring, fusee, center wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, escape wheel, pal fork, balance wheel. And again, I didn't want to use this in the mainspring winder because I thought, I'm not breaking this thing. I'm going to do everything by hand. I would have no idea to find where to find a replacement. So we're just going to install the mainspring by hand. And this is Mobius 8000. And I went a little heavy on the oil because it's very old and worn and it most likely needs it. As you can see, the inside of the mainspring barrel is quite worn, meaning there's a lot of friction. And some D5 in the middle. Go to another handmade tool, another handmade mainspring barrel closer tool. Some more D5. A little bit of D5 for that. Um, Click for the fusee. There'll be a couple parts that I did not film because this thing was horribly hard to put back together. So I did install that click spring back, but I didn't get it filmed, unfortunately. Oh, and here I'm checking the fusee to see if the train is free. And so all the pivots are in their jewels, everything's free. Put a little power on the fusee and watch that power fork waddle back and forth. And install some taper pins, but I got all of them, it just unfortunately I didn't get to film at all. Thread the fusee chain in between those two posts and by the fusee to reach the mainspring barrel. And it has this hook that hooks into a hole, and then there's that finger that sticks out that locks it in that hole so it cannot fall out give some tension on the fusee chain so that it doesn't just fall off the mainspring barrel. And I don't know if this is the best way to do it. Again, I've only done two or three, but I'm basically just winding the mainspring barrel, winding that, not the mainspring, but that fusee onto the outside of the mainspring barrel. Because that has to have tension or else the, the chain will just fall off. And we'll get that on there. I'm just holding it with my finger, I mean, and I don't know if you noticed, but I stuck that chain right onto the fusee, and so still, but no tension. And so essentially you have to flip the dial over, put that little gear on there, and start to wind the mainspring arbor to give tension to hold that chain onto the barrel and the fusee. And now we're just, we're just cleaning up the uh, little bit of dust that's on there from holding it. Some Radico. Those jewels are so beautiful and so big. This is some um, 9010 for pivots, train oil essentially. I didn't know what to use, either 9010 or a thicker oil for this fusee arbor, because it was jeweled. So I just used 9010. I know it's a high friction. This is the, so sorry, this is the uh, lower jewel to the balance. This is the upper jewel to the balance. But it's jeweled, and I know it's low friction and 9010s for high speed gears, but I just used it. So this is South Castle Street, Liverpool. 21706. It's Josh Sewell. What's the manufacturer? Well, D5 for the center wheel. lower part of the bridge, or sorry, lower part of the train, all those pivots. Jewels. Little Mobius 8000 for the motion works. 
1802. I don't know what that number meant. But... And this is the perspective under the microscope. Such a pretty dial. Railway timekeeper, that's what it says. Look at all these taper pins in there. Such pretty hands too. We have kind of a gilded and silver hands with a purple second hand. So you can tell this has been worked on before. <laughs> Get the balance wheel in there with our offset stud. Next thing is to find a case for it, which will be impossible, but it's another journey we'll take. Oh, and also the end stone to this balance as well is to the balance cock is a diamond, which is really cool. Get that in there, give it a shake. Oh man, the balance is so free for being such an old and worked on watch, it's so amazing. Uh, I just found a, a key that fit both the winding and setting of the watch, and so we did this. So pretty. I love the brass and gilt with the blue accents of all the steel and then the big, huge Liverpool windows. It's such a beautiful watch. Watch that chain go around on the fusee. Man, this does not have an 18,000 beat. It's like a 14 or less. My machine barely picked it up, so. I didn't show that because I wasn't expecting this to keep time on the machine. I was going to bench test it and make adjustments accordingly. But what a beautiful watch. What a beautiful watch. Hmm. Very cool. Now those chains actually were made by women and children because they had very small, delicate hands that could hold and link those chains together. Just amazing. Roman numerals with the oversized sub-second dial at the bottom. I love the, the black text with the red accented railway timekeeper and the model number. Such a pretty watch. I really appreciate you guys joining me with this video, and uh, this is something new that I tried. Uh, doing a voiceover with, with the video, and next time I think I'll have sound with the video. But uh, thank you very much, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.